Oh, you want me to zoom in? Zoom in. Uh, we about to read like this. All right, guys. <laughs> I'm so glad. <laughs> what is going on, guys? We are back today. And hey, look, check this out. I know a lot of people always have a hard time, especially beginners, getting into fighting games, and how to stay motivated and how to reflect on yourself and see how you're progressing and improving. I think things like this, like self-reflection is always important. This is how you get strong in fighting games or just improve naturally. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and check out this article. Let me know how you guys feel about it. Do you guys feel like this kind of inspire you guys to keep working harder? Let me know in the comment section below and thank you guys for watching. Let's jump into it. Don't forget to leave a like. Let's go. I don't necessarily agree that you shouldn't be playing. You shouldn't play if you're not feeling motivated, but I do think you should take a break if you find yourself kind of mindlessly staring at the screen and not paying attention or something else similar. Well, that's the thing. If you're not motivated to play, you're not going to focus. So that's why you shouldn't play. When you get into like, if you're gonna play a fighting game, you gotta be heavenly invested. If you're not motivated, you're just gonna mindlessly just do shit anyway. I feel like the word that actually happens come out often is being, it's impossible to do. I don't think it's impossible to really do anything when it comes to fighting games, especially learning. It's just a new skill that you have to learn. And it feels impossible, but it's not impossible. This individual name is Harper J. They wrote this article knowing about like what you're feeling and knowing about what's happening and like writing down how you feel while also like, you know, finding the enjoyment of like what you like. If you have heard about Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, it's probably as a game nobody plays or perhaps as a good game ruined by the pandemic arrival. I truly believe that this game actually died because of COVID. It's so funny because people were saying like, man, this game don't have combos. Now the popularity is this combo is too long. Pour one out for Grand Blue, bro. That was a good ass game, bro. Grand Blue arrived at the worst time and didn't have uh, the most crucial tools to ensure a healthy player population, which is true because if you remember the beginning of 2020, the only tournaments that was popping was literally next level. And because next level, you know, because player naturally, this is what, you know, people who play, who are upcomers and things like that, they like it when people watch them. So because everybody watches next level, everybody played at next level, right? And people were saying like, oh man, this is just a mini major every weekend. But in reality, it wasn't because half of the scene couldn't play. The late base netcode is uh, pretty rough. This year I started playing in competitive brackets while my success was limited. My growth was not as I matched against, uh, my growth was not and as I matched against newbies and champions of like fighting games took an entirely new dimension to me. Now, this is the thing that always happens, right? I don't think there's a fighting game that actually really found like the like the cure for it, but it's fighting somebody perfect for your level. I wanna say that that's always been an issue when you play at a certain level and you, you're getting, you know, you, you happen to be a faster learner amongst the new players. Then you try to go to the next stage. We don't know what that next stage is. People make it assume, makes the assumption is like intermediate. You skip beginner fr from novice and you went straight to intermediate. Dodge beginner because beginner has no like definition in the fighting game scene. I could be labeled as a beginner in Street Fighter and people would be like, yeah, he's a beginner because I've never seen him play Street Fighter V. Fair, I just think that anyone can get good if they really want it. I don't think most people actually want to. Well, there's a lot of variables. I feel like a lot of people don't, are, don't like talking about these variables because it's harsh. I feel like the reason why uh, people are more motivated to play like Strive is because of how rewarding it feels. Because if you hit somebody once, you know, you might put them in a very critical situation. Other games may not give you that reward until you learn the game. Then when you learn the game, you feel rewarded. That's why a lot of people don't like older games or legacy games, because one of the things you have to learn, you have to learn about the game, and then you eventually have to learn how to get good at the game, and then you are good at the game. You know what I'm saying? It's like multiple steps. And a lot of people don't want to put that time because they don't have time, or they just don't like it because they don't, they don't want to do all of that. They just want to play and they want to have fun. And then eventually when you have fun, you're like, well, I want to win it. But certain games kind of stop you from just going to the steps that you want to go. That's just how games are nowadays. Hence why most people about modern games have a lot of issues. 
it's like companies do things very great, right? You know, they give you a game and they make it accessible to play. But what's the definition of accessibility? No one has asked what accessibility means to a developer. I may have no uh, accessibility mean. I have. I may have a different def definition, but does that mean they're using my definition? Absolutely not. Their, their definition would be completely different. Accessibility to me is Joe Smo f***ing everybody up. Their definition might be accessibility is like rollback and like good single player content. I always have my, I have a personal issue with that. And the only issue I don't like about it is I don't like things being forced like when somebody designs something and make it feels forced, I don't like that. But if it's just naturally how it is, that's cool. But if it's, if, it, if it's being forced, I don't like that. But that's a personal thing, right? It's a personal thing. I could get over the personal gripes I have and still enjoy what I have. I mean, yeah, obviously, if you're a competitor at heart, you're always going to have a, a, a complaint about things like this because it just sucks. Nobody wants to deal with this shit. But people who are going through stuff for the first time in their life have no idea what I'm talking about. Because this is their, this is like your first thing, right? When you bring somebody up who's just been playing for six months, it's like they don't have any background of anything else. So they don't know any better. So all they know is what they have in front of them, which is whatever game they're playing and whatever character they're playing. And that's, that's their mindset. They don't know any better. It's not like they're not willing to learn, but they just don't know any better. I always tell people this. It is easy to learn something when you never have any experience before than to unlearn something and learn something in the process. It's always going to be hard. That's always going to be an impossible thing to do fast. I think legacy skills becoming less important as the game are ever changing and cause everyone to adjust and adapt to new game mechanics. I agree to disagree only because there are some games and there are some developers that will literally tell you that we want to make a game like this. And when you make a game a certain way, there's less skill and more luck. There is skill, but the skill would be more in a disadvantage in a situation more than when a luck situation happens. Getting into the ring, when I first started Grand Blue Versus, I come off, of the, uh, off of a pretty solid run with Giovanna and Strive and found a very different experience that truly tested my fundamental grasp of fighting games. But I feel I climbed that game rank towers thanks to the influx of very green players and Giovanna's advantageous frame in it, which I think made her very strong season one before the FD changes, right? So that, uh, this also explained like, yeah, I played a super strong character and I was able to do these things, right? And like, it allowed me to like, go up in a higher rank. And this is where things starts to be interesting. Uh, Grand Blue versus PC community holds lobby nights, and there's a Discord. I got my ass kicked last lap, and empowering character in terms of game feel, but I think he requires a very deliberate game knowledge to truly succeed. His low damage de uh, demands a lot of interaction, and you really need to master lens movement and mix options from dash to walls and jumps to get the most from him. Right? Just explaining like their perspective of like why i chose this this is what happened this is what's going on it was a mess and yeah this is my first time in a competitive bracket and that means running up against players with thousands of hours and literally trophies to their name but there is going to be bloody noses and yeah as time progressed and with the ad hoc coaching from friendly community members my mess my lancelot was seeing improvements and occasional advancement in brackets so this is another thing that i really like and i want people to understand that just because you do good at a bracket does not mean you fundamentally understand the game when you look at a tournament most of the time the the way tournament is designed is by luck as you get good and you understand that system you know how to make it where you have a higher chance most of the time because two out of three is a fa is, is very fast for a human to adapt. So when you have a lot of information on your opponent already, there's not much to adapt unless there's something in front of you, right? It's like, oh, he changed this up. Okay, I can figure this out. I got far in strive off a variety of cir circumstances that were simply not replicable in Grand Blue Versus. Isn't it a game without pressure, that is, but the pressure is not structured in a way as seen strive. But I wasn't swimming in a player pool with as much skill variance. The people playing Grand Blue toughed it out through the pandemic downturn. I was not one of these people, to be honest with you. I was, I was a casual player. My eyes was glowing. I wasn't. I, I was slushy. I couldn't do it. The people playing, oh uh, yeah, toughed out, which means they're dedicated and they're double applied to people in bracket. They didn't simply know Grand Blue well. 
They knew this type of game well and thrived when, uh, within this pace. So, so right here, like, they didn't know. They just like, hey, we just gonna play. We just gonna do, we gonna do what we do. We gonna learn the pace, blah, blah, blah. And they figured it out, right? So they talking about the Strive Tower now, right? So the Strive Tower is incredibly mixed bag with upper end, the floor scale to floor 10, or sometimes celestial, rise of a bunker wide range of players in terms of skill. Grand Blue simply does not have variance. If you're playing Grand Blue, it's because you really dug into the game. And I still think sometimes it's not really a great thing to do. Sometimes, because not everybody has that motivation. I do feel like, you know, something like Street Fighter 6 is doing, it's like, perfect, man. You know, you want to do like that world tour mode, you world tour it up. You want to just create your avatar and do the cool stuff, you know, do the cool stuff. Facing players with intense and sound fundamental play and playing with a mindset counter to the game pace with a reset for disaster. So, you know, basically saying like, yo, I didn't come up here thinking I was about to be Daigo Umahara. And uh, this is cool, man. Like, I really like this. These are things that people have to acknowledge about themselves. This is what builds character. Yes, you really need to laugh. A lot of people don't like that, but like, you know, some games, you really need to laugh. Pick a top tier. There's a bit of a joke header, but not too far off. Lance wasn't working out even improvements were coming beyond certain key abilities. I was given into the temptation to be over aggressive in a game where aggression is not always paramount. That's less a character problem and a problem within myself as a player, but it's something I could address with a character swap. Right here, dude. Acknowledgement. Right here. In the end, I looked at tournament results and top eight for a comparable character since Cavalier fell almost too plain. I'm not someone who really believes in Sanford Kelly's iconic advice. I wouldn't be playing Bridget and Strive if that was the case. Damn, you can't say that now because Bridget kind of top tier. I'm sorry. You can't. I read this too late. <laughs> Harper, no. <laughs> so, you know what's crazy? Like, you do want to pick a character that I, I'm going to be on. When I pick a character, I want my character to be well-rounded. It doesn't have to be broken. I just want them to be able to do everything in the situation, even if it's like, okay, in this situation. Sometimes picking a character that just, that you want to focus on learning, is always a good choice. That's why now I do like that games, uh, fighting games are a little bit more easy to jump into because now you're able to learn multiple characters and like kind of learn, learn about them. Like if I was playing Blaze Blue, it'd be hard for me to learn like 30 characters at, at the level I play. That'd be crazy. I would play in local groups and get body bad. They explain things in a way my brain can't process what I shouldn't do as if I hardly know what they mean. Yep, I'm gonna be honest. We just got done talking about people explaining situations to players. And you might have those players in your uh, local group. It's not, I'm not saying not to listen to them, but what I am saying is like the understanding of things have became a bit like a different language, right? Like uh, imagine, imagine goddess, if I tell you straight up off the bat, is that you're not OSing the situation real quick. What you need to do, you have to always OS. If you're not OSing, then you're not gonna do well. You're probably looking at the screen like, what the hell does an OS mean? And what, is, and what am I OS? That's how some people talk, and they don't know how to like turn that off when talking to somebody new to the game. What's crazy is you could talk you could talk the FGC language and not even know what to mean. You can still, and people, people will use it. Get a shuttle type with advancing records that's pretty achievable corner comments, right? Media improvement, Rob of tempting movement tools. My approaches became more deliberate, granting with punish tools, less very stubby. I was able to play better. I play a better neutral game that responded to my opponent. It's mostly a matter of the character fitting, the game pace, and messing with system rather than raw damage and LP special moves. Oh, there's a lot of things that people think that they understand things, but they realize that they are relying on pretty broken moves, which is okay, but what it does, is that it definitely ruins your thought process of the game. Like, do you guys remember when a specific Nago player uh, were complaining that when the first nerf happened, they were like, yo, Nago got nerfed. On When the season two changed, they were like, Nago got nerfed. And we were like, how did Nago get nerfed? His 2H doesn't hit crouching anymore. You see what I mean? Like when people use OP ass move, their, their perspective in the game is different than everybody else. Or like when Go Lewis drone would hit you even when he's getting hit, they're like, man, Go Lewis, like he lost his character personality. He can't do things anymore. These are things that people don't know that they're 
kind of going through because they don't look, they don't, they don't really like look at their self. They only look at their self when they're winning. They're not looking at their self and how they're playing. And this is why like a lot of people have a hard time playing multiple games outside of people who are new to the fighting games, of course. Has, sudden, has this suddenly led to countless tournaments, wins? Of course not. I've been playing Jita for maybe four months and I've lost practice time writing uh, the writing sprints and work. And I'm still learning and I'm also simply not able to devote as much time as I might like, but the year's biggest lesson learned is just adjust. Basically, what it says is the more experience you have, the better the understanding you are in situations. They're basically just saying like, we don't know the future, but like, yo, I'm be playing Strive. And you know what's crazy? Now, I think that this person is gonna probably have a better Strive experience from learning something from a different game and now trying to implement it in a game like Strive. Believe it or not, playing a different game and then coming back to the game that you stopped playing, bro, sometimes that shit opens like mad doors. You're like, bro, what the hell? And instantly you can start picking up things. So this is like really good. Self-evaluation is so important. It's so many, it's so important in many ways. Why? Because, you know, people tell me, oh man, I'm too old, I can't do this. Nah, bro, this person in their 30s and they're, they're learning. You know, sometimes like it's good to ask the question and try to like, uh, you know, understand like various concepts and things like that. You know, it really helps people because you start asking yourself, did I ask that question about myself? 